Provo was a Dutch counterculture movement in the mid-1960s that focused on provoking violent responses from authorities using nonviolent bait. It was preceded by the Nozam movement and followed by the hippie movement. Provo was founded, on 25 May 1965, by Robert Jasper Grootveld, an anti-smoking activist, and the anarchists Roel van Duijn and Rob Stolk. The term was used for the movement as a whole and for individual members. Provo was officially disbanded on 13 May 1967. Beginnings The Provosts are thought to have evolved out of the artist Robert Jasper Grootweld's anti-smoking happenings in June 1964. The following year other groups appeared as a fusion of small groups of youths sympathetic with the pacifist ban the bomb movement. Roel van Duijn is thought to have been the group's theorist, influenced by anarchism, Dadaism, Herbert Marcuse and the Marquis de Sade. The Provost borrowed their name from Wouter Bikhusen, who in a doctoral dissertation in 1965, talked about young troublemakers as provost, a word derived from the Dutch word provisoren meaning to provoke. Bernhard de Vries states that the Provost comprised four groups of people. The Happeners. Those managing happenings in Amsterdam and Antwerp, combining non-violence with absurd humor to provoke the police. The police were regarded as essential non-creative elements for a successful happening. And co-happeners. The beatniks and hipsters. The thinkers. Those publishing Provo ideas in magazines and pamphlets, including Provo, Revo, Eindelijk, and University of Amsterdam student weekly Propria Cures. The activists, or the street provosts, who engaged in direct action with the intent to influence public opinion. Harry Militia's book, Bericht on de Rattenkoning, Message to the Rat King, 1966, reflects upon the riots following the Telegraph's coverage on a worker's death in a protest. While their parents, seated on refrigerators and washing machines, watched TV with their left eyes, and their cars with their right eyes, a mixer in one hand and the telegraph in the other, the kids left Saturday evening for the Spooey Square. Magazine The 12th of July 1965 the first Provo magazine was published. It contained the Provo Manifesto. Written by Roel van Duijn, and reprinted recipes for bombs from a 19th century anarchist pamphlet. The magazine was eventually confiscated. In Provo No. 12, the magazine was described as a monthly sheet for anarchists, provosts, beatniks, pliners, scissors grinders, jailbirds, simple Simon stylites, magicians, pacifists, potato chip chaps, charlatans, philosophers, germ carriers, grand masters of the queen's horse, happeners, vegetarians, syndicalists, Santa clauses, kindergarten teachers, agitators, pyromaniacs, assistant assistants, scratchers and syphilitics, secret police, and other riffraff. Provo has something against capitalism, communism, fascism, bureaucracy, militarism, professionalism, dogmatism, and authoritarianism. Provo has to choose between desperation, resistance and submissive extinction. Provo calls for resistance wherever possible. Provo realizes that it will lose in the end, but it cannot pass up the chance to make at least one more heartfelt attempt to provoke society. Provo regards anarchy as the inspirational source of resistance. Provo wants to revive anarchy and teach it to the young. Provo is an image. Topic. Actions and ideas The Provos gained world prominence through its protests at the royal wedding of Princess Beatrix of the Netherlands and Claus von Amsberg. The Dutch royal family was unpopular at the time, and Claus von Amsberg was thought to be unacceptable to many Dutch people because of his Hitlerjugend membership during World War II. The engagement was announced in June, and in July the provost threw anti-monarchist pamphlets from a bridge into the royal boat. In the run-up to the wedding Provo made up a fake speech, in which Queen Juliana declared she'd become anarchist and was negotiating a transition of power with Provo. The White Rumor plan was put into action, as part of which wild rumors were spread in Amsterdam, including that the provost were preparing to dump LSD in the city water supply. These rumors led the authorities to request 25,000 troops to help guard the parade route. 
Dressed as ordinary citizens, the provost managed to sneak sugar and nitrate smoke bombs past the police. The first bombs went off just behind the palace as the procession started. Unable to identify the provost, the police overreacted and the wedding turned into a public relations disaster. In the week after the wedding, the police attacked and beat patrons of a photo exhibition documenting police violence at the royal wedding. Following these events a number of well-known writers and intellectuals started requesting an independent investigation into police behavior. Topic. Provoking the police The provost sought to provoke the police in nonviolent ways, aiming to shatter the self-righteousness of the authorities. Led by Grootveld, the provost began a disinformation campaign to demonstrate the establishment's complete ignorance on the subject of cannabis. The provost set out to get busted for consuming tea, hay, or herbs instead of marijuana. Grootveld and the artist Fred Wessels also opened the Afrikaans Drug Store, where they sold both real and fake marijuana. Topic. The White Plans The political wing of the provost won a seat on the city council of Amsterdam, and developed the White Plans. The most famous of those is the White Bicycle Plan, which aimed to improve Amsterdam's transport problem. Generally the plans sought to address social problems and make Amsterdam more livable. List of the White Plans White Bicycle Plan, initiated by Lude Schimmelpenning, the White Bicycle Plan proposed the closing of central Amsterdam to all motorized traffic, including motorbikes, with the intent to improve public transport frequency by more than 40% and to save 2 million guilders per year. Taxis were accepted as semi-public transport, but would have to be electrically powered and have a maximum speed of 25 meters, p. h. The provost proposed one of the first bicycle sharing systems, the municipality would buy 20,000 white bikes per year, which were to be public property and free for everybody to use. After the plans were rejected by the city authorities, the provost decided to go ahead anyway. They painted 50 bikes white and left them on streets for public use. The police impounded the bikes, as they violated municipal law forbidding citizens to leave bikes without locking them. After the bikes had been returned to the provost, they equipped them all with combination locks and painted the combinations on the bicycles. The song, My White Bicycle, by the English psychedelic rock band Tomorrow is about Amsterdam's white bicycle plan. This song was later covered by the band Nazareth, whose version was a hit in the UK pop charts. The song was also covered by actor Nigel Planer in his role as Neil of the Young Ones on Neil's Heavy Concept album. White Chimney Plan, proposed that air polluters be taxed and the chimneys of serious polluters painted white. White Women Plan, proposed a network of clinics offering advice and contraceptives, mainly for the benefit of women and girls, and with the intention to reduce unwanted pregnancies. The plan was for girls of 16 to be invited to visit the clinic, and advocated for schools to teach sex education. The White Women Plan also argued that it is irresponsible to enter marriage as a virgin. White Chicken Plan, proposal for the reorganization of the Amsterdam police called KIP, in Dutch slang, meaning chicken. Under the plan, the police would be disarmed and placed under the jurisdiction of the municipal council rather than the burgemeester mayor. Municipalities would then be able to democratically elect their own chief of police. The provost intended for this revised structure to transform the police from guard to social worker. White Housing Plan, the plan sought to address Amsterdam's acute housing problem by banning speculation in house building, and by promoting the squatting of empty buildings. The plan envisioned Waterloopaline as an open-air market and advocated abandoning plans for a new town hall. White Kids Plan, the plan proposed shared parenting in groups of five couples. Parents would take turns to care for the group's children on a different day of the week. White Victim Plan, the plan proposed that anyone having caused death while driving would have to build a warning memorial on the site of the traffic collision by carving the victim's outline one inch deep into the pavement and filling it with white mortar. White Car Plan A car sharing project proposed by Schimmelpenning featuring electric cars which could be used by the people. It was later realized in a limited fashion as the Wickcar system from 1974 until 1986. Topic. End 
Tensions with the police peaked in June 1966, when the construction worker Jan Wedgelar died during a demonstration. A strike was called by construction workers and large numbers of workers and their sympathizers, including provosts, marched through Amsterdam. Demonstrators fought the police in the streets on the dam and, dam rack and attacked the offices and vehicles of De Telegraaf. At the same time, the provost participated in left-wing student protests against the Vietnam War. Demonstrations were banned, resulting in an increase in their size and popularity. The police responded with increasing force, and by mid-1966 hundreds of arrests were made every week. Police brutality led to increasing sympathy for the provost and the anti-war demonstrators among the general public. An official investigation into the crisis was opened. These events eventually led to the dismissal of Amsterdam's police chief, H. J. van der Molen, in 1966 and the resignation of Mayor Geisbeer van Hall in 1967. After van Hall had been removed, Grootveld and Rob Stolk, printer of Provo magazine, decided to end Provo. Stolk said, Provo has to disappear because all the great men that made us big have gone, a reference to Provo's two arch enemies, van Hall and van der Molen. Topic after Provo Some members of the Provost continued in the anarchist Kabouters, founded by Roel van Duijn, and ex Provost also reappeared in the Dutch Green Left, a green political party. Topic influence Many Provo groups emerged in other cities in both the Netherlands and Belgium, Italy, New York. Stockholm staged an anti nuclear war happening, action under the name Provis. In London a death and rebirth of international times happening, after a police raid of the first UK underground paper, was seen as a Provo event. Topic see also Kabouters Orange Alternative Situationist International Witkar Topic References Topic External links Dutch Provos, High Times January 1990, pp. 32-36, 64-66 and 73. An article by Toon Voten on the history of Provos, includes pictures. Revolt and Recuperation in Holland, Internationale Situationiste No. 11 October 1967, translated by Ruben Kean. Proofread and copy edited by Not Board, Richard Kempton, Provo, Amsterdam's Anarchist Revolt Autonomedia, 27 August 2007. ISBN 978-1-57027-181-6 Roel van Dunn Biography Provo Archives in Dutch from the years 1920, 1940, 1955 to 1993 in International Institute of Social History, Amsterdam, Netherlands. A dozen souvenirs of Provo in International Institute of Social History, Amsterdam, Netherlands. Cor Gering's Photos of Provo People and Happenings Netherlands, The Second Liberation, Roel van Duijn, Becoming a Kabouter www.provo-images.info shows an almost full collection Provo pamphlets and magazines. Zeeman, Christoph Provo Movement and its Influence on the City of Amsterdam. University of Amsterdam.